Hi, hello dear colleagues. The title of my presentation is Ecolinguistic Approach to English Language Teaching. So throughout this presentation, I'm going to address seven topics. The first one is ecology issues in the English language teaching. So in, I'm sure that it is, so, it is very surprising to you to include ecology in the teaching of a foreign language. But throughout this presentation, I'm going to show you how significant it is to include this topic in our classes. And in this way, we can make the teaching of this language as meaningful as possible to our students, which is the best way to learn um, a, a foreign language uh, at present time. The second topic is the cognitive theory developed by Jean Piaget, who considered that social factors contribute to cognitive development. Then we're going to talk about the origins, the origins and purpose of ecolinguistics, how this approach developed and who were the first linguists to address this approach. The, anthropo the fourth topic is the anthropocentric language, that is the language used by, industri uh, by Western industrialized civilization responsible for the ecological issues we're experiencing at current times. Contrary to the anthropocentric language is the biocentrist perspective that, view, that views um, non-human animals and nature with a moral position. Then the sixth topic, uh, the sixth, the sixth topic is about research um, on a colinguistic approach in English language teaching. Throughout my presentation, I'm gonna mention some of the some researchers who have conducted studies on these topics. Specifically, I'm going to mention three of them. Um, as I told you before, there are many research about this topic. But since this presentation is short, I'm only going to focus on a few of them. Then uh, the final reflection will enclose all these topics um, as our final conclusion. So the problems of the environment in the present century should not only be addressed by academic experts um, and specialized in ecology, but also by those who are specialized in teaching a foreign language. The cognitive theory developed by uh, Jean Piaget um, allows aca academics to understand that a learning about ecology can be achieved um, through different uh, social factors. And we know that social factors contribute to cognitive development. Since ecological issues are extensively discussed in the social media, many studies have evolved to include ecology in English language teaching classrooms. Um, so, um, learning about including ecology um, topics in our classrooms um, will help our students to develop uh, their critical thinking and, as a consequence, develop their English language skills. Um, Applying the ecolinguistic approach to the teaching of English, the function of language is considered to establish, maintain, and observe a variety of relationships between all organisms and their environment. This view is contrary to the anthropocentric language used by Western industrialized 
civilizations responsible for the um, ecological issues we are experiencing at current times. Um, during the 50s, 60s, and 70s, ecology was a descriptive um, discipline addressed only by scientists specialized in ecology or only to learn natural science. However, um, in, in, the, um, in, in the year 1970, um, Henry Hagen, in his lecture, uh, The Ecology of Language, introduced the word ecology in this um, in in linguistics, twenty years later, Michael Halliday um, addressed that language is responsible for the current uh, ecological issues. In the year two thousand sixteen, Sibo Chen, um, in his work Language and Ecology: A uh, Content Analysis of Ecolinguistics, as an emerging research mentions that central to Michael Halliday's findings was his critique of anthropocentric linguistic. This can be understood in two senses. First, our daily communication refers to non-human animals and nature as mere usefulness or as a utilitarian anthropocentrism. Um, and also, on the other hand, all these ecological issues are addressed by um, uh, discourses that support non-sustainable actions. Um, but what is ecolinguistics? In the year nineteen in the year nine in the nineteen nineties, a new approach emerged that relate ecology and language uh, very closely to change the view human sees, humans see nature in non-scientific context. This new view of linguistic is called ecolinguistic and was first addressed by French linguist Claude Haggard in his work or in his book La Honde de Parole or The Man of Words in the year 1985. A Russian researcher called Emilia wasiki Wicks um, mentions that the aim of ecolinguistic is to demonstrate injustice in discourse contrary to the sustainability of ecosystems. So ecolinguistics not only analyzes the interaction between, between human beings or the interrelation of diverse language community, but also examines the interaction between human beings and their natural environment. <coughs> um, so anthropocentric language of Western industrialized civilization, as we mentioned before, is the cause of environmental difficulties. Uh, this anthropocentrism language is demonstrated, de demonstrated through the use of terms such as wood instead of trees in phrases such as harvest of natural resources and wildlife management um, to demonstrate the um, exploitation of nature or natural systems carried out by humans. We all um, acknowledge that cruelty to animals that we consider pets is social, socially unacceptable. But, however, um, the, the abuse and violent, violence of intensive farming and the slaughter of animals we consider meat is totally acceptable. At the same time, um, we can refer, uh, refer 
um, uh, we can think of an eagle as be belonging to nature. So we struggle for its habitat. However, um, a chicken we just consider as mere human's food. And we justified the, the violence uh, to this, uh, this type of bird. So we inject uh, these animals, we inject uh, these birds uh, hormones or chemicals, we lock them in cages, we kill them, we, we brutally kill them, we wrap them in cellophane to be bought by defenders of nature. So this contradiction of language has been transmitted um, through in, in cultures through the use of language. <coughs> um, so what we mentioned above can be illustrated in a simple exercise that changes our perception towards the relationship we have uh, we have with other uh, non with uh, non human animals. So here in this image that you can see, um, we observe uh, some birds um, locked in a very small cage. We normally refer uh, to them as pets. But what about if we change this term and we refer to them as captives? The second picture, uh, uh, instead of referred to them as pork, we refer as sliced ham. The third picture, is instead of um, calling this meat, we call it corpse. And finally, the image of this donkey, we all know, or we normally call them um, working animals. But what about uh, if we, instead of calling this animal as a working animal, we call it as we call it a slave. So it, it will be very questionable that someone will be willing to eat meat if we refer a, we refer as corpse. Um, so grammatical categorization of countable and uncountable nouns in English and other European language are classified as natural resources such as air, water, soil, trees, forest, among others. Um, these are refers to uh, uncountable nouns, which justify the intensive exploitation without any restriction. Contrary to the anthropocentric, uh, anthropocentric language, um, the biocentric perspective maintains that all living creatures have a moral position. Now we're going to talk about research uh, of the ecolinguistic approach in English language teaching. As I mentioned before, we're only going to refer to three of them because the presentation is short. So the first one is um, the study conducted by Orlika and Stefanovic in the year 2018, explore language learning from an ecological point of view. Professional and social skills are vital for ESP students in an environmental learning base, which relates to a variety of skills combined with significant knowledge of the world. In this sense, ecolinguistics is essential to find the most effective ways and practices to improve students' communication and learn with transversal competencies. The ecological approach combines previous methods, such as traditional ones, that focus on grammar rules with current communicative approaches. The second uh, research was conducted by Dragascu and Stefanovic in the year 2017. They look at language acquisition from an ecological perspective. In the ecology of language learning, instructors and students interact 
and the students collaborate among classmates. The development of communicative methods provides significant useful resources for ESP teachers with an ecolog ecological mindset. Contrary to minimizing the recent methodologies we as teachers currently use, ecolinguistic perspectives consider them as the basis for practical applications in the classroom. An ecological approach will combine these perspectives and instead of focusing on grammar or vocabulary in ESP teaching learning, language that emphasize quality and authenticity will be integrated. Finally, Van Leer in the year 2004 um, sees that the ecolinguistic has become a system committed to the analysis of ecolinguistic um, ecological discourse. Current research has shifted to an innovative area of language teaching related to ecology that focuses on the learning environment, quality, collaborative learning, communication, and the importance of highlighting interaction instead of objects. It is very beneficial to appeal to a student's feelings and help them to feel compassion uh, towards non-human animals. For this reason, it is also um, effective to have our students involved in bison tracing projects, such as taking care of street animals, helping injured birds in the forest or at the beach, and cleaning the ocean. As a conclusion, English language teaching instructors and researchers should be encouraged to develop activities or conduct studies that combine contemporary teaching methodologies with new perceptions towards other species and the natural environment through the ecolinguistic approach. So that's all my presentation. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to your comments. Also, um, I encourage you to apply this um, new approach of ecolinguistic in your classrooms so you can uh, develop in your students uh, the English language skills in a meaningful uh, way because we know that ecological issues are, have a direct impact um, in humans and um, we can have our students be involved in projects um, combining the methodologies that we use to teach a foreign language, such as project-based learning, communicative activities, such as forums, role plays, and we can also have our students watch videos on the ecological issues, such as pollution, um, climate change, the extinction of a species, and so on. So thank you very much for your attention and good luck in your uh, future classes. Thank you.